propped my camera up like right next to the window so I'm sorry <laughs> about the sirens and noises and stuff but I have been told that sometimes my book adventures or book reviews are helpful um, because a lot of you guys seem to have the same taste in books as I do so I was just gonna go through the most recent ones that I have read and I'm currently reading it's just four of them so bear with me I have two books that I'm currently re currently reading one is my evening book that I keep by my bed it is this one I really liked another one of her books um, called full measures she has like all of them here on the back so this one I read and I really liked it so I'm reading this one now um, I'm finding it kind of hard to get into it. I'm this far, like maybe, I don't know, like a like a third into the book or something. And I'm not really feeling it, but hopefully I will start to feel it because I really, as I mentioned, loved the first book that I read by her. So we'll see, stay tuned on that one. And then two that I just finished by the same author are these two. So his and hers and rock, paper, scissors. This one I finished yesterday and I gave it a 3 out of 5. I did not love the character development and I found it like I really thrive when a book has an like a protagonist or like some just someone that I relate to or like really find myself rooting for and liking and stuff like that. I didn't find that in this book. So 3 out of 5. This one though. I loved this book. I gave it a 5 out of 5 on Goodreads. Um, let's be friends there if you guys have Goodreads. But yeah, uh, it was really, really good. Kept me guessing. It was a little dark and twisted. If you like thrillery type things with a lot of plot twists, you will like that book. <sighs> Enter my least favorite recommendation I've ever gotten, ever. My friend Shuri and I, shout out to Shuri if you're watching this, we are book lovers and we share our love of books among other things um, and we always recommend books to each other that we should read and she has never ever been wrong about any book like every book she's recommended to me I have loved just as much as her but this is just this is one that I'm like zero percent interested in reading I don't read fantasy I don't like it it doesn't interest me but like she's recommended it every other person ever that has like responded to my Instagram stories or something um, has recommended it my friend Lindsay who I also really trust in terms of book recos has recommended it like this entire series and it seems to be super popular online right now but I don't know if that's like from people who like fantasy I don't like I've read two pages so far though <laughs> so right now I'm just like so this is my daytime read so this is the one that I keep in the living room <laughs> and then I have this one by my bed so these are my current books that I'm reading if you're someone who also do not find joy in reading fantasy stay tuned maybe this will be the book that changes our mind or maybe it won't be but anyway Welcome to the video. We have a lot to cover today. We have some prep updates slash news slash just things that have happened and all of that good stuff. So we're gonna do a little full day of eating and uh, we're gonna sit down and have a little chit chat about things that have happened. is my breakfast meal number one I have six little egg white bites with mushroom and two of them have cauliflower and then here I have five rice cakes with almond butter on them they're like facing facing each other for the ultimate mush togetherness but um, yeah five rice cakes with almond butter so this is my meal number one Here is my meal number two. We have some lettuce, 
chicken, sweet potato, and zucchini. Delish. Beautiful. Amazing. I love air fried zucchini. For pre-workout, just one a big heaping scoop of uh, this Alani new flavor in, uh, what is it? Cosmic Stardust. Really like this pre-workout. It's delicious and it makes me all tingly and nice, which I really like for um, my leg days especially to kind of hype me up. And it has only 200 milligrams of caffeine, which is nice for me because I am trying to not have, you know, three, four, five hundred milligrams of caffeine before my workout. So um, I've been really enjoying this pre-workout. For my post-workout, I usually bring a scoop of this BCAA in the sour gummy flavor, uh, also from Alani New, which I've also really been enjoying. So we're kind of on an Alani New kick lately. And speaking of that, this is the protein powder that I've been using for my creamies Oops. Uh, the past few weeks, I don't know, and it is like the best creamy I've made in a while. I'm currently on like kind of poverty macros, so I can't put like sugar-free puddings or anything like that in it. Literally all I do is unsweetened almond milk and some stevia from Trader Joe's and a scoop of this and it just is delightful so i really recommend this especially if you're into creamies this is the frosted flurry flavor so it's supposed to be like a little bit of a chocolate um oreo situation and it's delicious and the calories are so good it's only got one fat four protein uh, four carbs and 21 protein third meal of the day is chicken again with asparagus and some lettuce and mustard on top and here we have 40 grams of oats with frozen berries <laughs> of the day is egg whites, asparagus, rice cakes with salmon, and some dark chocolate. Last meal of the day is my favorite. We have egg white bites with mushroom, we have my creamy with frozen berries, and some cereal from Trader Joe's to top it off. So, prep, 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 prep how are things going so we are gonna chat about this so a couple of weeks ago or like three weeks ago or something like that i had a normal thursday check-in but just everything 
that I'd been thinking for the past few weeks. It's been many weeks that I've been feeling this way. Everything just kind of snowballed up to that point and it was just like I just walked smack into a wall and I was like I need I need time to just I need I need to think and so I communicated with my coach and I was like I just I need to figure out what I want to do uh, how I feel about this prep and like this timeline and I just I just need to think some shit through you know yeah thankfully me and my coach have like we've gone through many preps together so he knows me he knows my body he knows my mind he knows that i can push through things when things get hard so he knew that like this time it was different like i just needed to to think i needed to think he was like okay just take the rest of this week to um think and you know just relax have a date night eat enjoy don't go to the gym don't think about the gym just like go and uh think so i did that uh from a third day th thursday through sunday i just took completely off from the gym from prep from everything from tracking i did a lot of like journaling and just like sitting in my thoughts and like understanding more of what i'm feeling and i post some hard questions for myself to answer it became clear to me then that like i i can't be locked into this timeline of going for the new york pro like no matter what i've been saying it since i stepped off of stage in 2022 that like i'm doing the new york pro 2024 that is my goal but I, I think I have to let go of that um, New York Pro could happen next year or some other time or not at all you know who knows but I need to let go of I need to let go of that timeline and just uh, focus on coming in really really well conditioned um, instead so on uh, Monday I was like hey let's go uh and like me and my coach kind of lined on like okay we're just gonna give you a set of macros that are still like in a deficit and cardio but it's cut in half compared to what it was before this little hiatus and the macros are higher and we're just gonna see uh where those take us initially i would have been six weeks out from the new york pro this week if i would have um proceeded with that plan but i don't think i look six weeks out so essentially tldr the plan is that um i'm keeping on prepping but i'm prepping without a timeline so you ask me how many weeks out i am i have no idea and that's the first time i've ever done that it's wednesday it's wednesday evening just wrapped up work I do not train today, which is nice because I don't know if you hear the pitter patter outside, but it's raining hella much. Um, and it's like horizontal wind too, so it's like not a great situation. I went to the office today and the commute was just like straight up not a great time at all. So I'm just gonna sit here, I'm gonna relax, I'm gonna read some read this godforsaken book i have been very 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 hungry this entire week which is a good thing like it's it's well it's annoying but it's a good thing because it means that like my metabolism is firing probably thanks to that four day um break where i ate um more than usual and just like rested a lot so i feel like that might have like sparked sparked my systems a little bit hopefully
completely forgot that I had this little tiny mini waffle iron. So I'm making <laughs> poverty waffles. It's literally just liquid egg whites with cinnamon and I forgot to put stevia. I'm just now realizing, fuck. Um, supposed to be stevia and then just a little bit of baking powder. Cute. I had my check-ins this morning. So yesterday I was 163.8, I think. And uh, this morning I was like 164.6. So we're still there where we're like bouncing up and down between uh, 163 and 165-ish. And it's honestly, it's been, I've been at this weight since the middle of February and it's now early April <laughs> so it's like and my calories have been lower they've been higher they've been like refed or whatever uh, cardio has been up down like it just feels like my body is like yo between 163 and 165 is where we're gonna stay because we love it here I started this prep at 185 and the 21st pounds like I would say it was pretty like a pretty smooth prep like it was it was pretty smooth to uh, get those first 20 pounds off but I guess now now is when we're gonna start having to um, think about some things so yeah but anyway took my check-in photos sent them off to my coach um, we'll see what he says I guess uh, stay tuned for uh, that. Hopefully you guys can hear me over my air fryer. Um, I am just whipping up my next meal. I posted the like the making of my little egg white waffles to uh, my Insta story yesterday. And a surprising amount of people were like, OMG, I have to do this, what, what did you like do? <laughs> so uh, I thought I would just recap here as well what I do. So I just weighed out egg whites, I do liquid egg whites, uh, I did 220 grams of liquid egg whites, and then I do my sweetener drops and cinnamon and baking powder. And just mix it all in a bowl and then I use my little mini egg I mean mini waffle iron to uh, make them waffly and I do spray the the iron otherwise it's never gonna unstick but I use the pamphlet cooking spray um, to spray them down so yeah that's that's my little egg white waffles creation station. Okay, one of these days I do want to like take a real stab at making a Paragon leggings comparison tryout sort of thing because it's very confusing in terms of all the fabrics they have and like the amount of butt scrunch and like the amount of see-throughness or like squat proofness and whatever but I actually do have a code for you guys to use if you do want to support me and get 10% off on Paragon fitwear um, my code is Danny K. I'll put it somewhere here. But anyway, they sent me these two beautiful, beautiful, beautiful colors. Both are leggings. And I just wanted to show you guys the difference between the original sculpt seam and the original sculpt seam plus. So these purple ones, these are original sculpt seam. So this is the back of them, and as you can see, it is a very unpronounced, but still present, um, booty contour. 
and as you can see here on the inside of the leggings it is this little like elastic piece that will allow your booty scrunch to kind of or your booty booty rather your booty to be more pronounced but not like too pronounced if you're not into the whole booty scrunch thing so then if we look at the original sculpting plus you will have a much more pronounced scrunch when they are not on you so as you can see you see like a little light like scrunching of the booty in there and it's a, like a more aggressive scrunch on the inside but when these leggings are on this is what they look like when they're on like on my body so as you can see you don't you don't see a booty scrunch the way you do with a lot of other brands and leggings types this is by far my favorite type of booty scrunch that i've worn just because it's like you get the contouring effect but you don't get that weird like seam thing where it looks like the sun is shining out of your butt sort of situation so more pronounced is the plus less pronounced but still present is the not plus both are squat proof and both have really nice elastic waists i would say the waistband on the these gray ones is a little more um rigid which is good for me because i feel like these are a size medium and i feel like i almost should have gotten a size small because i have to like hitch them up quite a lot so they are very stretchy in the waist which is good you know depending on what kind of body type you have but since i'm in prep my waist is getting smaller and it's just getting increasingly difficult to keep leggings staying up um so these are my current favorites and they are so comfortable and so beautiful the length for me is perfect i'm 5'7 and they don't scrunch in the in the ankle area at all and it's hard to explain but like you know the leggings that you really have to struggle to get over your heels these just like slide right on it's just like a like you've oiled your legs or something it's so great anyway that's my little legging rant so this is them on as you can see they are buttery sleeky slicked onto my body and this is what the scrunch looks like in the back so it's not at all like ugly pronounced and this is the length <laughs> what an influencer <laughs> i have the best space in my apartment for for this kind of like show and tell but you get you get the idea happy friday it's morning so forgive my morning voice but i just did cardio got ready for the day not really going anywhere today but as i mentioned in my last video i like to just feel more put together so i got ready anyway i've been in prep now for five months and for the past six weeks my body has been fighting it already still we are treading that 165 water um so talked to my coach yesterday and i was like if you remove emotion from the equation like what do you think like what do you what is the best course of action here and he was like physique wise and like muscle mass wise i'm pretty close to where i need to be to be very competitive like olympia level competitive I do still need some glute and primarily upper glute and some tie-in action but like everywhere else i'm pretty spot on in terms of like what we feel like i need and so a little bit of building he's been through a lot of preps with me and he was like i don't want to make you walk into a wall um similar to what happened in 2022 i really had to push super hard and like i couldn't lose any more weight and it started sitting around my waist and just wouldn't go away and that is happening again now my waist just is 
collecting water again um super frustrating and if you've watched other prep vlogs you know that this is kind of what happens whenever my body is like enough we've had enough it's been long enough uh kind of thing and i do think i could push through it and get leaner but i don't think i want to i don't want to have to push through walls and push my body into the super unhealthy state of um, breaking plateaus when I've already dieted for five months and I don't even know when the show would be like if I knew I'm six weeks out I would be like all right let's just let's just fucking go you know but I kind of look like I'm ten weeks out and I just yeah I don't know so all this to say that the plan now is to give it one more week we added five more minutes of cardio so nothing crazy if the body doesn't break through this plateau in a week of like more cardio and keeping up the intensity we might just reverse me out of this prep and try to keep me around this body fat and build some quality tissue and like kind of be in an off season again and then prep down the line at some point but at a much better starting point I already had a better starting point this year compared to 2022 in 2022 I started at like 198 pounds this prep I started at 185 pounds but imagine if I could start my next prep at around 170 and if I then lose those 21st pounds that were like quite easy to lose this prep um, just imagine how that would look you know like it's kind of this is kind of where delayed gratification comes into play and like learning to appreciate that aspect of bodybuilding and not just being so focused on like wanting to compete obviously I feel I would feel disappointment and guilt if I didn't compete this season but at the same time maybe a little relief because I, I don't enjoy pushing my body into a super unhealthy state you know I love my body I want it to be healthy and happy <laughs> so um, it's kind of like a push and pull situation but we will see how things go one day at a time we'll give it a week see if it gives if it doesn't we will reevaluate the plan so in the spirit of me being into more teas lately I found this at Trader Joe's It is a matcha green tea And I feel like green tea is good for you Matcha is good for you And here it is in one lovely little can And it's zero calories I will sweeten it with my favorite sweetener the only one that I use is this one from Trader Joe's, which is just a liquid stevia, organic liquid stevia. Gonna plop in a big old ice cube. Cheers. We are back on the couch, ready to chat through some developments. So it's been like a week and a half. Um, and yesterday I talked to my coach and we just decided that we're just gonna go ahead and put prep on pause. So what that means is that we are going to reverse me out of uh, diet mode and just hit some sort of maintenance macros where I can 
build quality muscle but not gain too much body fat so that once we are ready to pull the prep trigger again i will have a much better starting point point. and how does that feel um i feel a mix of emotions on both ends of the spectrum if you will i feel a little bit like guilt and shame because I did, you know, head into this season with the best of intentions of competing and like having a really great successful season and um, beating my previous package from my pro debut, which was not great. Um, and I've just been looking forward to really just proving to myself that I belong on the pro stage and I really wanted now to be the time. but. At the same time I feel relief because health is so important to me and I, I've been dieting for five months and I've lost my period which it happens most of my like diet phases when I get lean enough that I lose my period but I just that paired with like other hormonal factors uh, like the fact that I'm retaining water in my waist again. Sorry, I have like a hair here in my lip gloss. That's just driving me insane um, Yeah, it just my body is telling me to Slow down and When my body tells me that my mind tends to follow and in my mind, I'm like, oh my god I just really need to be healthy right now <laughs> obviously I want to be healthy uh, but I know I'm not in a healthy sport and I know that like I can push through the unhealthy phases if they're short term but in this case it wouldn't have been super short term because like I mentioned I think I, I think I mentioned it I'm like very many weeks out I'm not like it's not like I'm four weeks out and I'm very lean and I can push through an unhealthy phase you know um, there would be like months of being not very healthy when I'm already not feeling super healthy in terms of like hormones and all of that. So there is relief and there is guilt. I think my primary overarching emotion is excitement. Even though I have major FOMO, like missing out on all these great shows that I've been planning on wanting to do and like traveling for shows. I love traveling for shows and all of that like I am primarily excited because I have never been able to like nail a reverse diet I've always gone off track I've always eaten off plan I've always ended up gaining like 20 pounds in two weeks but this time I'm really committed to following my reverse and like keeping the body fat gain to a minimum i know that i'll probably gain some body fat but like ideally i could stay around this body fat um and then i could also see you know more clearly when i'm gaining muscle in what areas i'm just really excited to have a very quality quote unquote off season i don't know how long it's gonna be i don't know when i'm gonna start prep again um all i know is for now we're gonna head into a little bit of a building phase and I'm excited to take you guys along with me for that as well and like hopefully um, show you how my reverse is going and uh, all of that so I have like this playlist uh, prep vlogs 2024 that I'll plop this in but like I'll probably this is probably the last video in that playlist I think maybe I don't know but for now um just a quick wrap up i'm gonna put my photo here start of prep to now so obviously end of prep is you know not really a stage ready look or anything but this is how far we got so i started at around 185 186 pounds now i'm around around 165 so minus 20 pounds in these photos it's november 15th through april I don't know like eight or something so that is five months of prep minus 20 pounds um yeah but i want to thank you guys for your support for being here um i really don't want to disappoint anyone and i hope 
I don't. Um, and yeah, thank you for being here, for watching, for supporting me. Um, I love this little community here on YouTube. So yeah, on to the next video. Next video will probably be more like a reverse, how it's going. Maybe training with some energy um, and things like that. <laughs>